Okay. Hi. In this video, I'll be talking about the only chains that liberate uh, bicycle drive chains. I will be talking about uh, bicycle chain construction and standards. Because I think it is important to understand that in order to understand when we talk about how bicycle chains are uh, cut to size, how they are connected and uh, how the, the optimal chain length for bicycles with one speed or with multi-speeds is determined. So the first things first, let's talk about chain construction. And here we have one chain link. Uh, bicycle chains con consist of pairs of links like this. There's a, a pair of outer plates and a pair of inner plates. And this makes one bicycle chain link that is exactly one inch long when it is new and as it wears it elongates. But that is the nominal length and one pair of links, if we measure between these in the, from the middle here to the middle here is half an inch. That is the nominal dimension. And there are, here we have this disassembled. Okay, we're looking at this here. So we have two pins that connect. We have two outer plates. Then we have two inner plates. And there are two rollers. And many links like this are connected to make up a chain. And when a chain is connected, these pins are locked into the, the outer plates. So if I hold just one outer plate and let it go, the inner plates will move independently easily, but the outer plates are connected. They have to put in a lot of force to make these two turn against each other. I cannot do it easily by hand. On the other hand, the inner plates are independent and they can move freely, as you can see. Okay? Uh, I've wrote, I wrote uh, several articles on my website about bicycle chain standards and about bicycle chain wear, how it wears, how it elongates and what exactly elongates. So I won't be bothering you with those details. I'll put all the relevant links in this video's description so you can check it out and read about it. But here we'll talk about the dimension, bicycle chain dimension standards, because bicycle chains today are, uh, are uh, made by standards uh, according to the number of rear chain rings they are designed for, from one single speed to 12. I think the Spanish rotor company has designed a 13 uh, sprocket, uh, 13 sprocket rear hub, but uh, that's a bit exotic and they use 12 speed chains. I have an article on that, I must uh, read it and uh, refresh my memory. I'll put a link to that as well. That is their main difference. And before we go into the modern standards, I just want to make a brief digression about the old obsolete chain standards, how chains used to be made. Before these modern chains that are all basically the same, some details differ, but this what I've shown, the construction is basically the same. All chains had bushings covering the the pins. So between the rollers and pins there was a bushing that went from one inner plate all the way to the other. So Im imagine having a bushing here in between the pin and the roller, ranging and closing the space all the way to the other inner link. Uh, why those bushings were good is because they entrapped any lubricant preventing any lubricant for easily, from easily leaking out or being washed out. And so those chains lasted a lot longer, uh, five times more miles you could get out of such a chain with regular maintenance and regular gear shifting. Uh, there are some downsides to that old design. They were a bit more sensitive to improper gear shifting. If you ro rode uh, cross-chained by a severe angle, I'll put a link to my article explaining cross-chaining and I think I've even made a video. I'll, I'll put links to those, but for now cross-chain means that you are putting a chain at an angle, like riding small chaining up front and the smallest in the back. So the chain is at an angle. When you ride like that, and especially if you try to shift while pedaling hard, shifting under force, those chains were a lot more likely to break than the modern chains. Also because of the extra element, that bushing, they were a bit heavier 
and they were a bit more expensive to manufacture, a bit more complicated. So when manufacturers figured out they could make a chain that is cheaper to manufacture and lighter, which sells best in the bicycle industry when you make something light, it was a win for them and all the modern chains now are a lot less long lasting. They need to be relubricated a lot more often, but they are a bit lighter and you can abuse them more cross chaining and so. And now let's take a look at different chain sizes. Here we have typical chain models. I will explain why they are typical. We have a single speed chain. We have a six speed chain for six rear sprockets. We have an eight speed, eight speed chain and a nine speed chain. I will now explain why I, I chose those four chains. But here first Let's take a look at uh, chains. As the number of speeds increases, they uh, change in their inner width and in their outer width. Here I have marked what I mean by inner width, the space between the inner plates of a chain. For single speed chains, the inner width is 3.175 millimeters or 1/8 of an inch. These measurements are the nominal sizes and these are just rounded down to the metric system. But for me, metric system is a lot more intuitive. I can easily see that this is smaller than this. While these two, it takes me a bit of uh, math, <laughs> a bit of brain work to figure them out. So I'll be talking in metric system. Give me metric system or give me that. Okay. For six to eight speed chains, that means six, seven, and eight, of course, the inner width is 2.38 millimeters. And for nine and more speeds, the inner width is 2.18 millimeters. This is the exotic inner width of chains for uh, cargo bicycles or in some special uses, you won't be seeing these very often. So that's one way that the chains differ. Now, let's show this. Here we have a six speed cassette. We have six chainings on it. Now, if you want to make a 12 speed cassette, your rear hub does not have double this space. Because if you move further inward, you will not have enough room to place spokes and to keep the rim in, in center. So, in order to put more speeds, manufacturers started making the space between the rear chainrings smaller. So the cassettes got more tightly packed, more tightly spaced. And they also, in order to reduce the overall width, they made each chainring be a bit narrower. And that is how they achieved more speeds. The result of that is that if you use a chain for fewer speeds on a cassette, it might not fit. For example, this is a six speed cassette and if I put a single speed chain that is a lot wider on the outside, it will not fit very properly. It cannot get to the middle of the, of the chain ring. If I try to do this on a 12 speed cassette, it would not even fit between two chain rings. It would get stuck most probably. Here. This is an old single speed chain ring, a single speed chain, because with single speeds you don't have to care about the outer width all that much. And they made some models that are a lot wider than the most that we see today. So this is a lot wider, it doesn't fit in the same chain, chain tool as, as this one, the newer one. And let's see how this one fits over the six speed cassette. See, it's almost pushed more to the side. It's even wider when you look at the middle of the chaining, the tooth. With, with 12 speed or 10 speed cassettes, the differences are even more exaggerated. And so, as they made the cassettes tighter and chain rings, cassette chain rings narrower, they also started making chains narrower. So, for all the way from, from single speed to 12 speed, as you go each speed increment, the chain gets narrower and narrower. They start from 7.8 millimeters for six speed chains to 5.25 millimeters for 12 speed, speed chains. But that's not all that was changed. When you look at single speed chains, then six speed all the way to eight speed, you can see that these pins are protruding. They are a bit outside further out than the outer chain plates. 
I'll try to put to catch it on camera. You can see they are a bit wider to the sides. The same goes, but a bit less exaggerated for six speed chains, seven speed, and for, for the eight speed chains. They have standard pins that are a bit more to the outside. For nine speeds and more, the pins were made like with small indentation. Some are hollow all the way through to reduce weight, but that's not uh, crucial for this in this context. The idea is that the pins are not protruding on the outside to make the chain more narrow from the outside to easily fit between the, the tightly packed chain rings. So, uh, with these, these kinds of chains for 9, 10, 11 and 12 speeds, the, the pins are, are like called hollow pins and they are a bit different and that's important when we talk about connecting chains in a separate video, or di disassembling them and reconnecting them. But for now it's just important to note that change in chain construction from 9 speeds on. And when you're combining chains, because uh, at the moment I'm making this video, uh, the supply for bicycle spare parts is very poor in my country and from what I can understand the similar situation is in Europe and in the United States. So there's like a mismatch between supply and demand. So if you need to mix and match and to make do with what you have available, you can always use, in my experience, chain that is for more speeds than your cassettes has sprocket. So if you have a 6 speed cassette, you can use an 8 speed chain with no problems. On a 7 speed cassette, I've used a 10 speed. My bicycle now used for testing uses a 10 speed chain on a 7 speed cassette, cassette and it works okay. So if you go 1 or 2 speeds more, with the chain it's okay, it will work, but you cannot use the chain for fewer speeds. So if you have an 11 speed cassette, you should not be using 10 speed or 9 speed chains because they will be too wide and they will get stuck and won't shift properly, you will have all sorts of problems or the chain trying to shift by catching on to the adjacent sprocket even when you are not trying to shift and, and similar. So you can go with more speeds, but you cannot go with fewer speeds with chains. Of course, chains for more speeds are usually more expensive and they are not any more durable and so you will always be trying to get the right number of speeds for the for the cassette but if you don't have much choice you can go with more speeds I hope I've explained that and this concludes my talk about bicycle chain standards in this video I hope I've shown and explained it properly if you have any other questions you can check out the links to my website where all this is explained in graphics and pictures and you have all the exact data of the chain widths and cassette sprocket widths and so on. So that's it. Thank you for watching and cheers.